Hey, this is Shane from Performance EV. Today, we're building drive shafts. Hey folks, welcome to the channel. Thank you so much for joining us. For those of you new to this channel, this is my project to put a Nissan Leaf motor into a Porsche 911. And we're, we're getting closer to being, being able to have a usable car. Um, in the past few weeks, months, I've been getting the motor in position, getting some of the signal wiring done, and we're kind of getting down to the last few jobs that are needed to be able to, to move the car under its own steam. Even if it's not the finished article, I would just want to be able to get it to drive forwards and backwards as a start. Um, still a bit more wiring to do, uh, which we'll get to at some point over the next few weeks. But what we're going to do today is the actual physical connection, the mechanical connection between the Nissan Leaf drive unit and the Porsche. So that is the drive shafts. The, uh, in this case, it's um, half shafts, so CV axles, between the transmission or the, the gearbox differential of the Leaf drive unit and the Porsche rear wheels. Um, so I've got uh, Porsche CV axles, I've got Nissan Leaf CV axles, they've got very different um, ends to them. So what we're going to do is basically chop them into a couple of pieces and use the inner side of the Leaf axles and the outer side of the Porsche ones uh, and basically weld them together. So this is not a long-term solution. Um, this is just something so I can prove that I can actually get this thing driving, but also to make sure things like clearances are right and to use them to measure out to get some proper custom made um, CV axles done by a professional engineering firm. So the plan for today is the, the interim solution and that's basically we're going to chop the large chunks of metal off the existing half shafts and then we're going to try and either butt them together and weld them or potentially if I have some metal of the right diameter uh, sleeve them so have, have something that goes over the two ends I'm putting together and then weld around that. So a lot of, a lot of cutting and measuring is going to be needed uh, and then some welding at the end. The longer term plan is that we'll use as I said, these half shafts as a template. And basically we're gonna buy uh, some hopefully new or aftermarket, whatever, Porsche drive shafts from the, um, from the manual 911, uh, which are longer than the, the ones that were in this and are longer, I think, than the, what we're going to need and basically get them cut to length and then a machine shop to grind new or machine new um, splines on them to match the leaf pattern. Uh, but that's for the future, still need to find a company that uh, can do that without me having to travel too far up the country or ship heavy objects too far up the country. But um, yeah, I wanna get this done first so that we've got something that we can measure against. So first things first, we're gonna need to get the, um, the current parts into the car, match them up against each other and see where we're gonna make those cuts. Uh, so let's head back under the car. So these were just really exploratory cuts. Um, 
because I wanted to see what the what the inside of the two drive shafts was like. Because um, based on the initial cut I'd done to get the uh, wheel side off the leaf um, piece, it had a very very thick wall on it, which makes sense. It's right down by the the wheel, so it's where all the you know the force first hits when whenever anything um you know goes over a bump or anything like that but i um didn't know what this wall thickness was going to be like so the first cut was done with a view that i would butt the porsche unit right up to it and then we just have to weld it wouldn't be as strong but fortunately the wall thickness has dropped down as it's spread out and there's actually less than a millimeter um, difference between the internal diameter here and the external diameter of the Porsche part. Um, so what I'm thinking is with a bit of heat and a bit of brute force we might be actually able to use this as a sleeve almost um, for the Porsche unit. So in order to get this to work um, what I'm thinking is I might actually be able to use a portion of this for the um, driver's side where the both the drive shafts are narrower um, to sleeve those and then just put the Porsche one into this one. So I'm going to cut a bit more off this one, a decent amount, but leaving enough that I can use it. Then we'll get this one back in the car, get the Porsche one in, figure out where to make the cut and go from there. So now that we've got these drive shafts cut to length, or at least the parts of them, the bits of them cut to length, uh, I've got a big pile of components that I'm gonna need to fit together. So the first thing we're gonna do is just get them cleaned up, uh, make sure there's nice accessible metal um, to weld to, but also that there's no paint or anything that's gonna make the diameter of the shafts artificially large, or that's gonna melt when I add heat. So yeah, so let's get them tidied up and then we can start putting them together. So the drive shafts properly prepped, we can now move on to trying to put them together. Uh, for that, we're going to need to basically heat up the wider part, so the part that's going to be sleeved over the, the narrow bit, uh, try and make it expand enough that it will um, fit over the other part, and then when it cools it will basically shrink to fit, make a ni nice tight seal, and then we'll weld around those edges. So yeah, let's uh, get some fire. So now we're going to trial fit the new drive shafts. Uh, I won't be able to fit them fully because I need to, because of the design of them, I'll need to pull the um, part of the suspension off the uh, axle hub uh, to tilt it so we can get them on but we can we can see if we're in the right ballpark when it comes to length and if we are then we can weld them up so both drive shafts um, are a reasonable length for what we need them so now we're going to weld them up and um, then let them cool down and paint them. So we're going to weld them, tack weld them on four sides first uh, just to make sure they stay straight and then we'll go back and finish it with a proper seam. So 
So these fall under not pretty, but they'll do category of engineering. Um, I'm not sure I would trust them on highway speeds and I probably wouldn't even take them up to 30, but they'll work for my purposes. They'll allow me to get the car around the um, garage and, and make space for some of the bigger things that I'll have to build out later, like the battery box and that sort of thing. And they will also um, let me double check that I've got the lengths right so that when I do get some replacement Porsche drive shafts that are longer than these original ones, I can get them cut down to the right length first time around by some professionals. But for now, I'm going to hit these with some primer and some paint, uh, make them look as neat as I can, and then we'll uh, put them back together and uh, get them in the car. So that's where we're going to have to leave it for today. We've got our the structural part of our drive shafts done. Um, as I said before, they're they're good and solid. They're definitely not pretty, um, but they'll work for what I want them to do, which is mainly prove that the placement within the car works of kind of the the motor and gearbox. Make sure I've got the proposed length right, and then just be able to move the car around very short distances, um, not on public roads, uh, just to make sure there's no fouling and to get it out of the way when I need to do uh, any other fabrication and that. This took quite a while, um, but it was mainly doing the same things kind of over and over again. Cut, measure, cut again, measure again. Um, and then when it got to kind of putting them together, it was kind of just heat, hammer, heat, hammer uh, to get them far enough on that it was a good solid fit. And then, yeah, welding and just grinding back the welds to try and make it look a, a bit smoother um, and make sure there were no sharp edges or anything like that. But yeah, it's, it's there now, it's done. Um, still got a couple of jobs to do on these basically to get all the old um, grease out of each of the joints and repack them with fresh grease and then just um, attach the new boots on each on each end. Uh, so it's a little bit easier on the, the leaf side because I can actually take them apart. So as you see, um, the CV joint isn't on this end at the moment, but uh, it's not too difficult to put on. These Porsche ones are a piece that you're not allowed or not able to take apart. Um, so I'll just have to try and flush them out as best I can and then repack them with, with fresh grease. Um, and then we'll, we'll look at getting them on the car at some point in the future, probably after I've gotten the, the motor turning. Um, and we'll, yeah, we'll maybe get the car down <laughs> and rolling in the not too distant future. Um, I think in terms of kind of this process, as I've said previously, I don't this isn't a permanent fix and I, you know, I wouldn't recommend doing it uh, if you were going to be driving the car on, you know, highways, motorways, even, you know, fast roads. I think you probably could make this work um, if you had better tools and more tools than I have, um, especially around things like measurement uh, and that sort of stuff. So, you know, if I had more machining tools, better able to control the the diameters of the the various pieces with a lathe or something that would probably make things easier and then if I had the right tools to measure both uh, how straight these are um, you know they're, they're straight to the eye but I'm sure if you got them onto some sort of sensitive equipment you would see there's a big variance as you as it rotates through the um, the 360 degrees but then also the thing is the balance is going to be off on these um, because I've got no real way of controlling the weight distribution. You know, I tried to keep it as consistent as possible in terms of how much weld I put on each, um, each side of the thing. But again, that's something that I don't have a huge amount of control over. And it means that if I was to run these at speed, there'd likely be a lot of vibration coming through, um, which 
number one, it's not nice to drive, but number two, it's it would potentially risk damaging, you know, the the CV joints themselves or the bearings that they they run through, um, which is then going to be a bigger headache. So yeah, so these are temporary measure, but they'll let me move things forward with the project now, and then we'll um, we'll use them as templates for a proper set, which is just a single shaft with no welds uh, in the future before I get this actually on the road. But yeah, um, this has definitely been an education. Uh, it took me a lot longer than I thought it did, but I'd rather take the time and get these things right than rush through it. But yeah, um, thanks for, for joining me with this one. If you've liked what you've seen here and you want to see the rest of the project, please consider subscribing. As always, comments are appreciated. And um, till then, thanks for joining us and I'll see you next time.